all right guys uh, let's start off with a new subject called strategic management before i start that i would like to tell you a little bit about what that subject is all about and also why we have uh, a specific inclusion of this subject in our ca inter now there are uh, many things that a chartered accountant can do in today's time right so one of the most predominant things in any sector that you go in is to manage things right so the word management is a very beautiful word whatever you add before that it gets a new meaning to it like in this case you are seeing here strategic management but i am pretty sure that this is not the first time you heard anything about the word management maybe as a subject you will see strategic management for the first time but as a matter of fact this is not the first time you would be looking at anything towards what strategic management is all about uh, in the sense wherein what management is all about right because we have basic words like health management wealth management time management so somebody gets two or three hours exam they are not able to finish the exam then the next best thing will blame on us time uh, time is not enough how's time not enough you didn't manage well so basically everybody has the same set of limitations i think all of you are students of economics you should have understood that there are unlimited wants but <laughs> yes limited resources everybody knows that's the very first page of economics because that's what the subject of economics starts with how to use those scarce productive resources in the most effective manner so which is exactly what management also does so here in the context of this particular subject what exactly the word strategy means why is it relevant to us what management is why is it relevant to us and when we combine both these terms it all together gives birth to a new subject called as strategic management so what about that so taking all this into consideration and in fact i should also tell you that when this is for 50 marks there is other set of 50 marks ah uh, which is again financial management where is it still management so the fact that both these subjects are talking about couple of managemental aspects not only finance or strategies there are so many things that get managed ranging from people one of the most toughest things to manage we can manage even money because a good thing about money is it doesn't talk back people are there no they are not so easy but they talk back right so everybody has an opinion thoughts and this is what in the long run becomes what is called culture when you follow the same thing for a long time it becomes tradition values ethics like this these are new 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 names that keep coming in so when you are doing something once it's just an attempt of doing something but when you do the same thing repeatedly it becomes practice and when something becomes a practice if it's done over a period of time it becomes what is called tradition like sometimes now when we are asked to do something in the house if you go and ask them why they'll be shut your mouth and do it no logics why because great grandfather was doing it very good nice logic right so sometimes anyway not to criticize anything there but the fact that something has been done long time it becomes a tradition now good bad keeping that aside same thing applies to an organization as well when somebody practices something like if one of the top managers of an organization is corrupt obviously nice leader to look up to right everybody is are hey, my boss is only corrupt why should i be like this so it sends a different message so one of the most important things of management is that leadership so like this there are very very interesting things management is an ocean of a subject then again like i said which are split into so many subsets so one of those subsets which we will be discussing is on strategic management so if you are of some inclination towards any kind of interest that happens in the business world by mistake if you you know choose to read papers because that's a uh, uh, so even if you are having a little interest in the field of finance right you pull out any now it is nobody reads papers so if you pull out any app like the money control or mint or economic times or any of these apps and then start just trying to read uh, anything of business news i'm pretty sure if you are reading at least you know like 8 to 10 columns 
six of those will have words that you learn from this very class so it's all about what happens in business somebody will be doing a merger on a daily basis acquisitions are happening right now startups are growing so you are in a scenario where i think uh, it's right now being called as a golden phase for the country also so by the time you guys are out you should be having one of the best platforms Oppor opportunities are always there just we need to know how to pick them up that's a different story but then like i said this is a kind of uh, time where economy is growing now when economy is growing obviously economy can grow only when the number of businesses grow when number of businesses are growing it's a straight indication that those number of accountants those number of auditors so there's going to be a lot of work and over the time what i've seen is like you know what has been defined as a chartered accountant way back in 1949 is not what a chartered accountant is today right things have changed a lot so if you think that you know chartered accountant is still stuck with accounting auditing i think those days are gone as such if you are interested in doing that because today also predominantly it continues to be the field of audit that you know many of the chartered accountants look up to because that's the core field of it plus you have so many others right like you have accounting specializations in accounting then we have specializations in management studies as well but like i said it is up to the interest of people to pick up people do two year mba courses on management and then select one particular topic as a major finance marketing hr all these are mba domains have you heard no mba hr mba marketing what are they doing they're all productive functions of an organization so they take that study for one full year about only that learning so many cases and like what we learn here is only the subject of it like because it's just a 50 marks paper telling you what to do but but nobody can change the fact that you go to harvard or stanford also the fundamentals of management don't change so if you are asking me are these the same definitions that are taught anywhere in the world yeah you go to stanford the best management college in the world they still teach you the same management definitions same management concepts but what they do there is today analyze these cases rather than we asking like when in our book something will be there we will read okay as it as a concept there they will question why why did this happen what led to the happening of this will there be a new concept because of this like 2020 said a great example for what is called a pandemic no it's not the first time that a pandemic took place this one took in place in 1920 nobody remembers that right because it is not necessary to remember 10 years to when something happens people tend to forget it so today if people are preparing a list of business risks they'll prepare pandemic they're ready for something because it was the first time we heard something like a lockdown in long time there was i, I mean as such as in the, like i said last 100 years there necessary to there was no need or necessity to lock down everything and close and sit at home but globally once they did that what did that send a message that this is also a possibility that the entire world can shut down right maximum what used to happen you know a few years back when actively something used to go on band used to happen now also once in a while band will happen maximum what will happen buses will not function public transport will not function some auto union will make a strike things will go on we'll find alternate means and move on life doesn't stop right uh, so no matter where you are that twin today's kind of an economic growth in, if you are in one of the major cities in india no matter what happens we are seeing how rains are pouring down sometimes well, life doesn't stop but for once something like a pandemic brought the entire world to a standstill not a place not a city not a nation world so that's one of the economic events like from where we can learn that okay business also can come to a complete stop like that so like that because things like that can happen your management ideologies have to change there are so many businesses that flourished for years right there are businesses which flourished for 25 years 30 years which got completely done in 3 months time because they never planned for what is called contingency right they shut down their business for one month little bit of reserves whatever were there they exhausted second month more pressure third month gone they're not resurrecting from their own they and their business which was their long legacy is all gone which again says that you know you might have established businesses which might have worked very well which might have been there for years together but like you know one event like this everything can come down to zero so how do you manage thing today people are preparing contingency funds today people are thinking that what if there is a lockdown so today businesses they are intelligent enough to think they thinking like if something like that happens again 
will i be able to sustain for a period of 3 months or 6 months if we have to do do that how much funds are required what should we do with that these are all things that you know you have to think and keep today's time again things have changed in the course of digital infrastructure so this subject like i said though i have been teaching this for so many years it has evolved in its application so much so the same concept that i taught 10 years back is very much there in the same book as much but the way it is applied right now is completely different okay so in the last again few years and that too we are in india so the digital infrastructure is one of the best in the world right now whereby several businesses several businesses don't have a physical infrastructure only you understand what i'm saying by physical infrastructure which means they don't have a physical presence they are online businesses they completely 100% e-commerce driven all you need to do is have somebody is i mean of course there is a physical presence of it but not necessarily that you see it somebody is there somewhere they set up something and there's one concept called cloud computing which is thanks to you know like the whole digital setup right now works on cloud so there need not be a physical establishment or infrastructure for any of these things to run and like i said by the time you guys get into the real world only things will become more evolving and more changing and now then 10 years back or 10 12 years back people were joking about you know what is this nonsense that they are talking about digitization and all that where in one village or where in one street from vegetable vendor will be able to take credit cards like that the people were joking now today you see every street vendor even you might have done a upi for 5 rupees or less than that also so it doesn't matter uh, i mean in fact sometimes when we send 1 or 2 rupees on a upi you know the cost of doing the transaction is more than what you are actually sending so it still doesn't matter like i said the kind of things that we are doing right now how strategic management has evolved how strategic management has been integrated to several aspects how digitization can be connected all these are some of the fundamental things that the subject has now since this one seems to again be a transition some of the points are you know like so going forward people who do this from the current stream of foundation they might not get to have an idea on all the things that you studied in foundation as such you know like you studied micro environment macro environment a little bit of things like that here a little bit of insight again is there as to what are some things that we are supposed to study about anyway i will get to that but meanwhile this is what the whole story of it is and then like i said since we are practicing as a chartered accountant when you practice no as a chartered accountant if you are working in some industry as a chartered accountant if you get into a job you are you know obviously dedicated to what you should be doing so you will not need to manage anything there but when you are running your own practice you might think that you know we are not selling any products we are not doing any business why should i really be bothered about any of these things no, but as such running a practice is nothing short of doing a business only thing is we don't sell products but if i can tell you that all of you must have understood that product means it's both goods and <laughs> so when we are rendering a service which also comes under the concept of a production or product aspect so every topic of what we see here forget about whether you do it elsewhere or not or for an exam or not you by yourself in whichever place you are working you will always be applying some of the managemental aspects so taking that into consideration actually the syllabus right now has been very simplified straight and made it you know like a, a neatly organized pattern it just has about only five chapters but this 50 marks is split into 15 marks of mcqs okay and then 35 marks of writing answers now let me alert you here thinking that you know you be it's easy to score marks in mcqs yes it is easy if you know what you are answering if you are playing 1 2 3 4 within that then they will also play with you right so please don't be have the wrong impression that we can choose something from them the mcqs they are not going to award you marks taking that you know that's not something that they are gifting you in fact i sometimes feel it is good to get marks here because if you know a three marks question at least if you know 50 60% points correctly you will get one or two marks here it's only one so you know it you will get one you don't know it you won't get anything so which is more risky 
and some people you know they start with sir i thought that is the answer you can think whatever is the answer the question is whether that is so which is exactly why i told you some time back have concentration in class because every line that we discuss could turn out to be an mcq somewhere or the other now wherever they have been asked as mcqs or wherever they have been tested in the past i will keep alerting you on those but that doesn't mean you put a start to that saying that it will come again we don't know anyways so are there anything important that you should follow yes whatever i teach is important and why will teach the whole book so the rules are very simple we are not going on any selective study any you know like okay this can be understood later we are not going to do that so we will be fully focusing on right from the basics as to what it is because that's how the subject is framed so it is important that we understand what the subject is all about it's actually a very 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 easy subject in terms of understanding because in academics no matter what i talk no matter how much i tell you that management is this management is that studies are fantastic we will be discussing so many examples that happen practically uh, throughout the book there are so many points where there are a lot of scope to discuss all of that but end of the day there is nothing that one would like to uh, think of other than marks when it comes to exams so no matter how good we discuss all this end of the day i will still want to come to the same point because you are students and you have to behave like one and for a student end of the day marks are important right so so i have excellent knowledge uh, but it reflects as 10 out of 50 doesn't make sense no so end of the day we should balance both maybe you are very greatly knowledgeable but when you can't do that in the exam uh, exams and marks okay like i said personally for me i doesn't matter how many marks you get but at the end of the day uh, you, you should fulfill that purpose also right so i don't want to hang around you know people with uh, 40s i always suggest that you know when we have 40 as a pass mark we shouldn't be hanging around that anywhere close by because what happens is if you hang there you get 42 you can get 40 you can also get 39 now if you get 40 you don't have a problem if you get 42 you are an intellectual right if you get 39 you failed so all of them what they did is to write one more answer or one more point correctly so intellectually all three are in the same range but since there is a benchmark set up somewhere there it classifies somebody as a failure oh, what's a big knowledge difference between 39 and 40 right ideally this 42 might have been more dumb person than 39 40 so it's not the question of who is dumb who is intelligent everybody has something to do something went well that day that's all right so uh, like i said we should not hang around in this range only because if this range is very risky right so our ultimate aim is to make sure that you know we do whatever the best we can so numbers uh, which are you know like kind of unlikely numbers in ca are uh, 75 80 what are you talking like if somebody if i had to score 80 back then i had to write the same paper twice and then total up both those marks then maybe a possibility will be there where you can get 80 85 and all that but today it's quite possible that people are getting that because again like i said the range of awareness right the number of uh, you know the the syllabus that you can cover very early number of revisions that you can do plus the mcqs plus writing patterns plus a classroom training there are so many things that have changed to what things were 10 12 years back to now so there is a lot of scoring and in fact 5 years back also mcqs were not there so that time also scoring was a little difficult somebody reaching 60 was a great achievement but today again i am not sure to say somebody got so you get i'm saying somebody got so you have a possibility so every time somebody has been scoring 80 85 and in fact to be very precise they have been always scoring 40 plus in this paper at least two or three students be there in every batch who score that 40 plus which just goes to say they scored so you score i am not saying like i said i don't want to say that i will not because each one have their own plans to do but i am saying since somebody got it there is always a possibility which you can also get if you want to so rules are very simple guys stay concentrated in the class because if you are focusing in the class 90% of your job is done there only because first hand when something new comes to you if it gets into your head correctly as to okay this is what this topic is all about 90% of your job is done well two months later or when we are discussing audit later when we i ask you about do you remember this we discussed in strategic management all are you going i mean all of you are going to either 
look at the roof or see other space because we would have forgotten by then small points but like i said when we discuss that we will eventually be able to uh, you know what do you say recollect very easily and there are certain patterns of doing revision we will take care of all that now we can train you to the best only when you are willing to correct no matter how good somebody can train if that particular athlete is not running he is saying okay fantastic whatever you told i will not run then so it still will stand there only right so let us just get into this and uh, it's a straight simple 50 marks paper wherein they've been organized into a series of five chapters whose order also is very important in terms of understanding uh, the what do you say subject in a very clarity way okay so the first of the first chapter is actually not even a chapter you can see that as such they are calling it introduction which is what it is introduction to strategic management wherein they talk about what is a strategy what is management how does it really work when it comes to doing certain things if at all we are doing something how we will be able to find various alternatives to do things there is never a single way to do a particular thing there are always multiple ways and there are always new ways to do things so uh, that is what here you can see as a name strategic choices choice is always something that we can pick up right so introduction then the two chapters 2 and 3 whatever knowledge is possible to be got from those two we can get that much so that we understand our own business well what are we that's what the third chapter is all about internal environment we're not trying to understand anything outside we're just trying to understand our own self but we can do that only when you know where we are so the second chapter talks about external environment so basically the first chapter introduces you to terms what is strategy what is management what is strategic management that all these terms and then it talks about an organization how an organization is how many levels are there in a particular organization i hope all of you must be aware the three levels are there uh, so we will see don't worry all those names as to maybe you will you, there are certain things that you might know just as you know in a very simple context but right now sometimes they'll give you some nice terms to remember them so much of this is in our daily life that is what i'm talking about okay so strategic management is not some uh, intense new very difficult aspect it is almost all around us only it is basically in fact for that matter the word management itself is a way of life as we just talked about uh, you only told me no economics what is the fight in economics that wants are <laughs> and the means to satisfy them are limited. just imagine the other situation wants are limited means are unlimited uh, what do we do what do we do we don't really bother about that question only simple no that story is only over the real question is only when you have why will you ask a question only when you have an issue no now you know that you are standing in near a fresh water lake right you need to drink water you know that directly you can drink that water you are standing in front of a sea you know that you can't drink that water that's when you will find in front of me there is so much water still i can't drink that what is the next best way that i can do to take this water and drink we start thinking only when scarcity arises right you're standing in front of a fresh water lake why are you even bothered about water same way if every natural resource is so abundant that why would we even be bothering about it but abundance is also a problem in economics right say is a case in business sometimes when we have enough capital we don't know what to do so we'll waste it so that is exactly why the other 50 marks are there for you financial management see for some people what is the problem capital is not there so when capital is not there what will they do first find ways to get capital for some people capital is not the problem they have capital but they don't know how to manage it so they screw it up there some people don't have both that's why they go to himalayas right <laughs> so which is nice either way and then they go there they get enlightened they come from there and tell how to get both understood uh, so in any case the point being that in all these facts the thing that continues to remain same is the word management the strength of the word management is in not that particular word but it is in the word that is added before that and in this case since they use the word strategic management 
I'm going to just give you an idea that strategic management is a study which involves business. So if you ask me, sir, can we use strategic management for our exams? Of course you can use. You can use strategic management for anything. Right? In fact, I'm going to tell you that ever since you were born, you've been using strategic management. But only thing is, we've not been given names like that. Right? Should I clarify what I told you? Right? You're breathing in and breathing out. That's how we survive. Don't believe. Close your nose. <laughs> then you're wondering as if, you know, like, what is this fellow doing? If you want to try, I'm giving you the option also. Huh? Don't ask others to do that. You close your own nose if you want. Huh? If you ask others to do that, then it's crime. Correct? Uh, one minute later, then things will be very different. <laughs> Correct? So then, more uh, <coughs> simple, no more terms are see. Terms are very interesting. If you breathe in properly and breathe out properly, it is simple management. It's a strategy for your survival. Now when you are naturally not able to do that, right? We have some best of the hospitals in and around this area where they'll take you and put you in ICU and do what? Put a ventilator. What is ventilator? A device that can help you breathe. Now, that is what we were asked to do naturally, right? And when we are unable to do that, that's when the device is coming. So what does it indicate? That for you to survive, breathing is a strategy. And when natural breathing is not working, what the next best strategy that they can do is to artificially make you breathe. Like I said, if you don't believe, close it and see. Now, if you close it and then it doesn't work, it's called suicide. <laughs> right? If somebody else does that, then it is called murder. These are terms of law. Okay? Uh, anyways. The point is, now business, if it has to breathe, for business, no, they don't have, you know, a, a nose to breathe and air to breathe. For them, all the breathing happens only with money. So, as long as a business has enough money and ways to channelize that, that's it. Business continues to survive. A business survives purely based on the aspect of management. Now, whether it be financial management, business management, area management, time management, wealth management after you create something. So, like that, everything in this context is discussed for business. Now, as I just told you, have you been following a strategy? Like I just told you, from birth till death, we will be following a strategy of breathing. What is strategy? A technique. It's a plan. Right? So, it's very simple that every business should follow some strategy or the other. If somebody comes out and says, I am not following any strategy, super, that only is your strategy. <laughs> Understood? Sometimes, with respect to environment, if you go and ask somebody, what are you doing about this? not doing anything about this. That is your strategy. Right? Silence is also a response. Okay? Not in my class. Generally, I am telling. Right? Uh, silence is a very accepted response to the changes in environment. Okay? So, sometimes, I think all of us practice that also, no? Sometimes, right? Parents are scolding left, right? <laughs> because you know mistake is yours. You will keep quiet. Because they, you know that their maximum residence 15 minutes. Generally what happens, they'll shout for 15 minutes, 20 minutes. After that, they will associate you to a nice animal, donkey, <laughs> buffalo, something like that. And then they'll tell donkey will never change. You also know that. Yeah. <laughs> Agreed. So you will not participate in the discussion. Because you know that if you open your mouth, you will get scolded for another 10 minutes. <laughs> but when you know mistake is not yours, one minute when they try to open your mouth, you will be counter attacked. Because you know that, you know, it is not your idea. So... Our actions also depend on what we know, how much we have of the control. Same way, when environment puts so much pressure on a business, like I said, if it is in the first box of what I told you, hey, sir, business has to shut its mouth. Because business, if it does something there, it's only going to cost it more. Like I just said, when we did that particular thing and we know we are getting scolded for something that's our mistake, we remain quiet. So here I'm not telling that is business has mistake or something like that. But all I am saying is, here it's a time where you keep quiet. Because, okay, this is not something that we have to react for. Now, not reacting at the time where you are supposed to do something, not reacting is also a response. So, like that, there are some interesting responses that every businesses give. Sometimes businesses don't wait for environment to tell them things. They'll by themselves do something. So they're being very dynamic in nature. Okay. So, very nice. Sometimes when you don't respond at all, people are saying they're not responding at all. 
Sometimes when you are very dynamic and do something, you know what happens sometimes when you are very dynamic and does something? You become a case study for others. Right? How not to do something? People can learn from you. Right? Or you set up the base and give so much information to the others that they will be like all your mistakes are the secret of their success. Right? I hope everybody knows Swiggy today. Swiggy? Right. A few years back when Swiggy started, okay, it was not first of all Swiggy's idea. Right? In terms, there was another business called Food Panda, which is not there today. Right? They were the first ones to enter in food delivery business. Right? They had a horrible interface of their app. In fact, that app never started properly. Right? They didn't have a proper delivery tracking. So, what are the negatives of Food Panda? If you prepare one list, like about only negatives were there, that's a different story. But they prepared a list. Swiggy answered each one of them. Swiggy is a billion dollar enterprise, Food Panda not even there in the map. But idea was brilliant. So, like that, there are so many businesses which are built on the mistakes of the other. Okay, today, Swiggy's success is not just that, of course, it's not like, you know, they copied somebody's idea and did something. Copying an idea is not very easy. Right? Copying an exam, is it very easy? No, some people are very strongly telling, very good, nicely you tried. Uh, don't do all that here. My in our course, at least don't do that next time. Because the problem is, the one who you are copying, no, they are also like you only. Should understand that. Uh, if you know what I exactly said, it will take a little time for you to sink in, don't worry. Uh, so, if you are, if somebody is confidently writing in a CA exam, don't think that they are writing correct answer. They are writing what they think is the answer. Okay, which might be right or not. So, there is nothing that you will get to know unless things are done. So, I am saying there are multiple ways of things. Whether you become a case study or whether si your silence will be read as a bad response or a good response. Right? Today, so many things are happening in the global scenario, right? Around the world, countries are announcing themselves as strategic partners. I think every odd day when you see now with that to the summits and meets going on here and there, so many. Every two months one big summit happens, multiple countries come together and they say we are announcing ourselves as strategic partners. What are they all strategizing? Something for the collective development of all these countries. So the word strategy, word management, strategic partners, strategic alliance, alliance partners, these are all the order of the day. And of course within a developing country like India, mergers are one of the important things to grow. Right? Diversification is one of the, what do you say, strategic buzzwords right now. 10 years back something called outsourcing was a strategic buzzword. Right? Because that's when all the work came from UK, US, all that to India. Which is exactly why you have places like financial district and the high tech city flooded with so many IT companies and finance companies today because a lot of work was outsourced. And when that time the world's culture was whatever is costly in your country, outsource it to the next best country. So making software was costly in the US, so outsourced to India. Today we have such a huge engineering base wherein, you know, like if there are five softwares manufactured in the world, three out of them will be from India or some Indian connection will be there to them. So, business world is huge. In each area, what are you supposed to do? How will you try and align yourself into that pattern? In fact, like I said, as we can, uh, as I can keep talking on multiple instances, but it will be more right to talk about those in the respective chapters and the areas where they make a little sense. Now, one last thing that I will tell you before we start off is, can we apply this? To anything other than business, can strategic management be applied to people? Of course, the answer is very much a yes. Every concept in this book is very much applicable to you and me. Not all concepts exactly in the same context can be applied, but if you understand what I am telling, the essence of every concept, like the fundamental of what strategic management is, it starts with saying that you know you have to have a vision and then to achieve something. Uh, each of us can also have a vision. Until we achieve that, we can work towards using the same pattern. So it is a very simple subject in terms of a flow concept because you can't do step number 3 without doing step number 2. So we understand each one in the form of steps. Each step has several sub steps. So like that, as I said, uh, it will be too much for me to tell everything in the first class and there will be a couple of days where I will keep telling you this line continuously that we will see it later, we will see it later. Because 
even if i start now the first chapter where we think make certain things uh, you know when we understand certain things i'll tell you we'll discuss this later and i'm going to do that for the next 2 3 days because whatever is there in the first chapter is just an introduction to various concepts each of which we are going to see it in detail so like i said keep your minds open up to that and try and understand something here so in the title as you can see we have two words okay strategic management is not a single word first of all strategy on its own okay that's the first word what is a strategy then separately we will also talk about what is management management in itself like i said has a meaning and when these two come together that's when we have the concept of strategic management because how to manage the strategy within a particular business that's what we are going to discuss in detail and by the time we finish we'll be trying to understand that only as our core concept for which there are so many people who gave their theories see one thing about a theory in management is very simple you write something and write your name below that okay that's a theory now when you wrote something other people will try that if it doesn't work for them stupid fellow told something nonsense this that they'll scold but if this works for a greater group of people that's all this is a universal theory all of us can become management fundamentalists because what does a management fundamentalist do right what does he write the way they do something now if i write this is how we have to pass ca right that might have been my experience of passing it somebody tried to apply that they failed they'll find me and kill me for writing nonsense how did you tell this or did happen? see i never told that will apply to everyone okay so it is something that everybody has to understand there are so many management theories that don't apply to everyone because certain theories require certain prerequisites right i'll tell you one example which all of you should be knowing did you do this law called law of diminishing marginal utility yes very interesting law right you eat first apple a <laughs> second apple third apple what are, what is the logic in that when you keep eating apples the utility that you, which idiot will eat apples like that <laughs> one after another one after another huh? and then in that law there is something very interesting it says this is not applicable to addictive products like alcohol like tobacco this law is not applicable then what law you wrote is applicable only in certain context so in what you should do after reading the law or even before reading the law you have to read something called as the pretext what is that the assumptions that this law is driven on a basis that that fellow is an idiot in other words <laughs> what i mean to say is somebody on a constant consumption well, why will somebody keep eating bananas or apples like that right so if you eat apple then there is banana then you will eat that then there is orange you will eat that no one two and table also will be there about 12 13 numbers right? i mean no that law anyways jokes apart that person died okay <laughs> so we are not supposed to make fun of people who died but we can make jokes out of that no issues so i'm not making fun of the person no the concept very nice because he himself wrote in assumption right assume that that person is an idiot right no no they wrote is a rational customer rational customer is an idiot only right so anyways that is one thing and then in the book of economics there is another fantastic thing when you learn the definition of substitutes did you learn tea and coffee are substitutes yes. tea and coffee are substitutes now consider me i don't drink tea at all how the hell can i substitute <laughs> so i asked shopkeeper please give me a glass of coffee he gave me a glass of tea and said shut your mouth and drink that and when i asked him are you mad he saying no economics says these both are substitute <laughs> take it and drink it in fact in that book if you go a little more deeper it says tea coffee and beverages <laughs> well, let's imagine in the month of may right i went and asked some fellow give me a bottle of thumbs up or sprite and that fellow gives me a hot glass of coffee and said drink it saying are a mad fellow why are you giving me this he says both thumbs up and this contain caffeine only drink <laughs> and if i ask him one more step he saying tea coffee beverages are substitutes <laughs> so please understand it's very contextual in fact couple of chapters later you will by yourself discover 
the, the fact that you call tea and coffee substitutes, fine. When, when you believe that that fellow whoever is there is a person who consumes both. Like, like I said, for instance, there are so many people who only consume one of those. Or there are some people who don't consume that only. Right? So you can't in any context define something without an assumption. And business runs purely based on several assumptions. So for that, because in the later chapters when we are discussing the word substitutes, right, you will find competition from substitutes means you will not find competition from the kind of substitute that I told you now. Right? That doesn't make any sense. Because tea and coffee are substitutes in economics. Yes, it makes sense. Why? Because you are believing that the guy who is there in the discussion is somebody who consumes both. And in fact, in that context, if you give him water and tell him coffee, also he will drink. That is the kind of guy that you are talking about there. But here it is not like that. Here if you give water and say this is coffee, that customer will throw it on your face. <laughs> Business is quite different. He is paying for it. Nobody wishes to take bad service. Anyway, so this, there are a lot of points that have been written as such as theories, but there are fundamentally backed up by several assumptions. So like that there are so many people who spoke about so many theories, right, even in management. And as I told you, any principle in management doesn't eventually become a permanent principle. They are all time tested theories. Like I said, first they will do, whoever has written that they will do, it will work for them. Second time also they would have done it, it would have worked for them. When they did that multiple times and it is working for them, they chose to put it on a theory. Good. Now then the rest of the world is trying on that. For many big businesses, that way might work. Now that becomes a universal theory, which also means that it is not applicable to everybody. Okay. So like that, that is exactly why strategies have to be managed. Now otherwise, I can go to the nearest bookstore and buy no one book, how to do business. There is no book like that. Right? That way 1500 years back, Chanakya wrote a book called Artha Shastra. Right? Are you aware of that? Even today, much of the economic policies, whatever they call in the modern day, what you call as economics, business principle, they are all there, there. Uh, so 1500 years back they wrote, how will it work today? Exactly. 50 years back what they wrote only is not work. So, there are certain points that have been mentioned. That way you can buy that book, a copy of that, whatever has been written blindly follow that. Might not be suitable. Or it may be suitable, who knows. So, which is exactly why we are calling business to be a very contextual subject. Sir, what are all the context? I think you studied back then as macro environment. Tell me, does certain things like uh, critical, economic, socio-cultural, technological, legal, other environment, does it, does this ring a bell? Yeah, do you remember this, something like this? Then we have customers, organization, suppliers, market intermediaries, and then uh, competitors, all these people. Right, the micro, macro factors, I didn't write anything very difficult there. All I wrote was micro and macro factors. Like that every business get influenced by all of these factors. So in the long run, you might be immune to something saying that, okay, this is not an influence for me anymore. In the short time, what is not influenced, anybody can also influence you. One more thing, like for example, suddenly government changed the policy. It can have a deep impact on some businesses. And it might have such deep impact that those businesses might want to close and go home. Now, when those people are closing and going home, some people are waiting and clapping. Very good. When are you going? Because the exit of some players, does it give an opportunity to the other? Which also goes on to say that what are viewed as opportunities and threats are also contextual. In the sense, like say for example, government cancelled a subsidy. Ideally speaking, government is cancelling a subsidy. Many people who are in that industry will be like, hey, what is this nonsense? This is a threat. If the government cancels subsidy, where will we survive? That's what many people in that industry are thinking. But some of them are waiting for that to happen. Because they are way more than the subsidy. Their averages are above. So they are waiting. When government will cancel the subsidy? When many of these small, small, small businesses will die? So that we can pick up all their business in one go and we can become a superpower. So what is being looked upon as a threat by many can be looked upon as an advantage or opportunity by somebody. So if you ask me, sir, prepare a list of opportunities. I can't prepare. In what context are you asking? Which is exactly why till today there is no book how to be successful in business. Many people write their own ways of what they have done. Right? So everybody like I said they have their theories. Like I said there are so many management books that are available. And what does each book talk about? The experience of the author. He is not giving you a guarantee. See after buying that book you open and read the first page. I don't read book that's why I am telling you to read. Okay? Huh. So if you read and see there will be a disclaimer. Saying what? 
that whatever has been written in this book is uh, my experience and they will tell anything if you apply and does not work the author does not hold any responsibility but many people skip that page and read from the next page that's up to them but the point is the author also is telling hello listen this worked for me right it may not work for you right like how marriage is an okay let me not talk about that see uh, anyways uh, like marriage is that a kind of an example only no like many people are getting married and then you see it's a live example but still some people still go and get married again ah uh, very good we saw but still it's an experience right let me have that experience okay very good nice if you want to jump anyways any anyway. <laughs> right so i want all of you to come down to the very first chapter it's titled as introduction very simple five chapters towards the end of course i didn't tell you about the fifth one but the fifth one is the final phase of the story where whatever has been drafted or put up on paper will finally be put into action which is called implementation and then did you get the answer what you want it's called evaluation so it's a very straight simple story five steps to the story step 1 will be about deciding what you want to achieve step 2 will be about things to find out chapters 2 and 3 in detail analyze who is there close to you who is there far from you what is there within you so what is there within you is called internal environment we have two aspects to that like i said i think it will be too much for us to dump all that let's take it stage by stage so then we will find what is the best choice for us we'll implement one of those choices in chapter 4 what choices you will learn no those only we will implement in chapter 5 we'll see whether those work for that to work we need a framework we need an organization structure we need a great leader all that are discussed there and then the last word goes by evaluation is like after you write an exam correcting that same way here you implemented a strategy whether it's working for you or not we are going to cross check that so implementation and evaluation always go hand in hand in fact actually what you don't see there but what is the theme of that chapter is called control right no management story ends without what is called control control is an important aspect because when you evaluate and you don't get the result what you want the only thing that takes you further is called control control means to take corrective actions why were you not able to achieve something always you should have a scope or an open mind for control those businesses that don't give importance to control those businesses that don't have any relevance to present story i will always follow what is there in the book uh, maybe very good if you what is there in textbook if you follow today it might be good two years later the same context what we discussed today might not be valid so like that time the essence of things the pace at which something is being done value country presence so many factors are there that will impact why something that was very much an applicable principle a few years back is not applicable anymore okay and what is something new will continue to remain you only for some time okay because when multiple people start practicing that right there is a slight difference between the word invention and innovation of course both are different words but you should know how to use because invention now like say light uh, the bulb was an invention for the first time something like that was brought up no today edison is not there but his invention is very much there and then so many companies are making these bulbs right so now if it was reserved only to that person after his death what will happen so basically an invention be made widespread after that innovation happens so in something find found out now we are see stark contrast right in front of your eyes right there's one tube light there's one round light so it's the same everything is going light only right so the shape of it the design of it multiple strategies multiple ways of innovation right so now which is exactly what we are going to talk about in all these subjects and let me start with the very first uh, discussion on an introduction it's a small simple discussion as to what two words are what is management and what is strategy let us also start with that very first simple discussion uh, <clears throat> so you will find this name a lot in this book michael porter michael porter is one of the best management fundamentalists that in the recent times have come across porter has so many theories written which is uh, you know very workable in the field of management he has something called value chain analysis porter's uh, michael porter's five forces model 
is one of the best studied management theories one of the five fourths that can influence every business and michael porter's uh, three set of strategies for businesses which are cost leadership differentiation focus like that you will find michael porter's name a lot in the book and these definition this just to start off a couple of points for you to know what exactly the subject is the framework is you don't have to remember those they just codes company without strategy is willing to try anything which means you're just trying to do something blindly you know the game of darts where they take and throw it on a board right uh, like if there is no board you take a dart and throw where this is like that so here uh, wall other people those you can do here ma but generally the greater context of that is what see the idea of picking up the dart and throwing there is if you throw it in a you know there are different colors right red green yellow to mark the circle so your the outermost will have less uh, marks and then you get from 7 8 9 and then you hit the center you get 10 on 10 so there's a the game that is played like that is because how precise are you in hitting your target which is exactly what they're talking about so if you have no strategy it's like just taking that and throwing throwing where don't know so no marks no game you're going something blind and couple of chapters later they will tell you the same sentence a business that goes into battlefield i mean like a business that or anybody who gets into a business without a strategy is as good as walking blind into a battlefield now you understand what this seriousness of the sentence is walking blind into a battlefield means what you blind folded and you are walking your enemy can hit no risk ma death confirm <laughs> right where is where is even the question of risk so blindly you are walking in there some arrow or bullet is going to come and pierce you because you are not even able to see what is happening and what forces are coming at you so only thing is how quickly you will die that will be the only question pending so a business that walks into doing business without a strategy is going to get killed sooner or later but only thing is how soon so some people die very quickly some people die slowly those are all not my words they are all there they are all specific boxes of how business can do die quickly die slowly they are all things that which fall in different brackets okay anyways let's now get to a discussion of where we will talk about two important words and the second definition also says strategy is not the consequence of planning but the opposite of it it's not like i thought something so i got a strategy you think for the strategy after finishing thinking i we got the outcome as strategy no to get the outcome of strategy we have to think so that is what that line says strategy is not the consequence of planning i started planning i started doing something that's why i got this strategy no you actually do everything so that you can plan right that is why the subject is a very interesting one like i said at uh, uh sentence itself clarifies that you are not trying to achieve something by doing your actions will be driven and that output will come business most for most people business is like a trial and error okay let me try okay because they get into that business and they try now there that is why there are no established theories of success tell me guys same business can somebody be successful and can somebody be a failure in that like for example many restaurants why we are going till restaurants we'll talk about some small food place food street food vendors right you'd find one street food vendor he'll come and put up right one idli dosa bandi he'll put up one month he'll be there after that vanishes why because he thought it will work it didn't work vanished so there are so many other people are doing the same business no how is it working for them there are so many reasons for that okay it might be the quality taste location so many reasons are there or maybe one month later is capital got over whatever could be the thing so what may be a very successful venture for so many people might not be forget about all that for a small vendor selling vegetables is very profitable even today that's why they selling vegetables for an entity like reliance selling vegetables didn't turn out to be profitable in the form of reliance fresh they shut it down okay so who is doing what so reliance how can they shut down such a big brand with so much money somewhere beyond money sensibility also will come where do you think that you know this product is not profitable to us anymore that's when there are new strategies that come in apart from introducing a product you should also know when to take off that product from the market right introduction growth maturity decline like i said a lot of interesting things are there these are all the four stages right then stability is about constantly watching doing something growth expansion retrenchment retrenchment is a great strategy to say okay bye this is enough if i continue to keep putting money 
Now there is something for startups. What they do is called cash burning because for a startup, for their idea to work well, for first three months, six months, they keep putting money. Sir, what do they get in return? Nothing. Then why are they doing? Because to get something in return in future. So some startups do that for one year, two years, three years. As long as somebody is funding, they keep doing that. Because someday the idea will stabilize and from there it starts generating a revenue. But for most startups, if it doesn't work, all that cash is gone. It's like taking money and throwing it in fire. Simple. So, which is exactly the term did cash burning. Which is not literally burning it, but by doing an exercise like this. Five years later, the CEO is giving a speech. Saying that, okay, we tried a great idea. It didn't work. So, we are closing down. That's all. Whatever money the investors have put in, they're all gone for a toss. Now, is it bad financial management? Is it bad strategic management? Is it bad idea of the business itself? We don't know. So only when something like that happens, like I told you, if it doesn't work, it becomes a case study. Then you sit and analyze what went wrong. So that at least next businesses who are coming in the same stream of business will not do that. This is exactly why people in MBA colleges study the same thing for a couple of years. They don't study like it's a question answer. They study it more to be a situational consideration. Take businesses, whatever you are studying for 50 marks, imagine if they study it for 500 marks, how will it be? 10 times the size and idea of where it can be applied. Nothing more than that. So, the definition of management which says it's a key group. If you go to Stanford, no, there also the definition will not change. Because management is that only. Strategy is what is there in the next paragraph only. And strategic management is there, what you see below. So, fundamentals of the management subject remain the same. And to start off with, let us understand the concept of management. Generally, what do you think of the word management, guys? Forget about what they gave. You tell from what you, you have heard this word so many times. Huh? Handling something, okay. Uh, perfect textbook definition, planning, organizing. Right? Uh, like I said, 12th May, wherever you go, there are five functions only will be there. Right. Planning, organizing, staffing. Okay, that's a straight set of few actions together. Okay, leave planning, organizing. Some actions together are called management. Uh, then normally what else can be termed as management? Handling something, doing something. Why do you use the word manage when you say something? We're managing to do this, managing to do that. Getting things done. So you are not doing it, you're getting it done by others. That can be a sense of word management. Sometimes it so happens that, you know, whenever you go to some place, if you have a problem with something or if you are going to some institution or some place where you are getting into a discussion with somebody and that somebody says, we don't know all this, talk to the management. Now when they say talk to management, definitely they are not asking you to talk to planning, organizing. Uh, they are not asking you to talk to those. No, there the context of the word management changes. Now, no doubt planning, organizing, staffing, all that come under the definition of management. That is one context of it. What is the other context of management? Now, when I say, sir, this decision we can't take. We have to ask the management. Have you heard somebody say that sometimes? Right? Now, you went out there somewhere, somebody, you are asking something that, you know, like, you are asking a refund for a product. Okay? Or you are asking for some extra service. Or you are asking somebody, I like, I want to talk to somebody. They are saying, I can't talk about all this. I will call the manager. Some when somebody says call the manager or the guy in the admin or the uh, front office says talk to our management, I am not doing talk. When are they, what are they referring to? So they are referring to some people. Higher level, lower level, whoever be it. They are referring to some people, right? Now management necessarily need not be higher level. That's another perception that we generally get wrong. Right? Management is about, you only told, getting things done. Getting things done only gets done in the higher level. Ranging from a factory floor to a top corporate organization. Everywhere getting things done happens. So when things are getting done, it can be at any level in the organization. So management also is there at any level in the organization which a little lower we will come together. But before we discuss all that, the first and foremost thing that I want all of you to know is that management is nothing but a group of people. In the first place, management is what? A group of people. And that group of people are very important for the organization. 
which is exactly why we are going to call them as a key group there may be a lot of people in the organization now there is some employee working in reliance he quit reliance it is like okay go because the quitting of that employee doesn't matter to reliance but there's one employee who's willing to quit in reliance the organization is saying please stay back now both were employees of somebody like that only no for somebody why are you giving additional preference and say please stay back while when somebody is going you are not even bothering which is again defining that word key key means an important in this context so key group in the organization and when they say just now as i told you talk to the management when they say talk to management that means they are asking you to talk to the most important people for that particular job when they say talk to management doesn't mean that they are asking you to talk to the ceo of the company saying whoever is managing this aspect you talk to them right now you went to a restaurant you have a problem with some seating or something like that you are complaining that to a waiter waiter's job is to attend your call and go get the food and bring he will not take care of all the seating and he says talk to the manager because there is a floor manager who manages the place so everybody is designed with a specific task to do and those group of people who handle that task they are also called management apart from that management always has a textbook definition five things when they come together in an order that's when it's called uh, management planning organizing staffing staffing is putting the right person in the right place then we have some if you put the right person in the right place but you don't have somebody to lead them what is the point in putting everybody in the right place so you always need somebody who is leading or directing in the right respective positions and then things are bound to go wrong those people who say i will never go wrong they are not doing anything right that's why they are not going wrong so if you are doing something right or willing to do something right you will go wrong that uh, that is basically the rule of nature you end up going wrong now if you end up going wrong uh, you don't have to sit and cry after that and you know go back to sleep you have to find out what went wrong and go back to the roots of the story and correct it that corrective part or the corrective action is called control anyways like i said rather than discussing just things in the air remember guys management comes in how many context two context what are the two context one we are talking about people two we are talking about functions if you are talking about the word management in the context of people it refers to a key group in the organization but the same management if you are talking about management in the context of functions how many functions together make up come on let's read both management is used in how many senses two senses first of which management represents what is called a key group in the organization management is used in two senses first of which it is that it's a key group in the organization in charge of all the regular affairs in relation to an organization management is nothing but a chief organ uh, what is the chief organ doing its task interested means given a task of making it a purposeful and productive entity now how do they do that by undertaking the task of bringing together resources all are there in one place or are they scattered good they are all scattered now when their resources are scattered should there be somebody who should be able to gather all these resources first let's gather then we will talk about using them correctly because there are two challenges here one gathering them if you are unable to gather then you don't go to the second step only once you gather like i just said in startup they were dying to get money then finally one fellow agreed to pay them money after that fellow started paying money they didn't know how to use it so generally there are two problems one getting those resources after getting it using them so let us get to both the context if you concentrate carefully the first part of the story talks about making it purposeful and productive by undertaking the task of bringing together the word bringing together is in other words nothing but integrating the disorganized guys there are five m's okay i want all of you to remember this in the long run whenever we discuss about the word resources resources generally mean five m's
men material money machinery men material money machinery generally are resources but also another m sometimes which matters is the market okay for your product if that is not there no matter what you do end of the story it will be waste right they gave here see resources of manpower mean men money material and latest technology which means machinery are all combined into a functioning whole men material money machinery and market so all these five they are called as resources now you will see this word a hundred times in the book here and there again and again i am not going to repeat tell me everybody once what are resources men right men material money machinery and market they are all called resources so these resources now tell me sometime back you told once again i am asking are they abundantly available or are they scarce yes. very good they are scarce and because they are scarce only we need to manage them if they were abundant take and use no problem but tell me guys is there a competition for these resources yes. if you are trying to use these resources somebody else is also trying to attack for the same set of resources right they may be in the same business or they may be not now if somebody is having more money than you will they be in a good position to get these resources or not yes. that is why business are in a race to get and it's not always money right okay money might be one of the most important resource in business but it is not always the money sometimes it's about management right if men and material are good and with a decent amount of money right like how our indian space sector is dealing with so where both the intellectuality and quality are superior ma otherwise while other countries are spending thousands of crores they are not even crossing a few hundred crores to send missions which are successful why because which again proves to say sir can we send a satellite without money no it's costing us let's say for a flee if it's costing us 600 crores somebody else in the world is doing it for 1600 crores Now the point that i am trying to tell you there is both of that involve money but the usage of that after that what they did with that money men the man power the intellectuality the quality that they bring then all the machinery an indigenously built machine and then you send it it worked so which means now you are showing the whole world that listen you don't have to spend so many crores with this also we can send which means it's a new way of doing things now whether others are able to do it or not is a different story right which is what many uh, what do you say companies or enterprise in china did that a decade earlier to us right both both the countries are heavily populated right we are now actually giving tough competition in the field of manufacturing and things china is ahead to us by 10 or 15 years for that reason only why because they realize that their strength in manufacturing is so huge because of their ability to produce in large quantities what they were not afraid of is was producing in those large quantities why because whether the other world accepts it or not we have enough population our people only will buy that confidence was there for them for us to get that confidence it took some time of course for us to open up the economy for funds to come in now again like i said we are not going to the economic context i'm saying let's stick to what management is all about these resources are scarce sometimes they are available but when they are available you should know how to pick them up now for buying a 10 rupees product we are spending 15 rupees and then you are clapping yourself yeah i acquired the resource that is not great okay because acquiring a resource and acquiring the needed resource at the right price they are very important things like i said just now if you are getting a 10 rupees thing for 15 rupees and clapping for yourself that means sooner or later you are going to you know be failing in that business because this 5 rupees extra that you spent on acquiring that resource will find a shortage elsewhere and then somewhere a business will come to stand still so then how can i be right all the time which is exactly why we need to plan certain things organize certain things get the right people year after year constantly keep repeating the same thing by increasing the scale that's when organization will turn out to be successful in the long run and once established you have to continue right understood again many people be like yes if we reach the year sorry over no there a new story begins from there again you have to go sustainability or the word sustainable development which will come a little later in the syllabus which is why like i said i can tell you so many things but it will all be like dumping so much on you in the first class whereby we'll find no content so everybody tell me the first meaning of what the word management is about 
it is a key group of people in the organization who should make the organization a very purposeful and productive entity an organization becomes a unified unified means single complete okay in this context you can say a complete one full a organization becomes a complete functioning system when management systematically mobilizes and utilizes these diverse resources effectively and efficiently guys when these two words are written in the same line what is it called it is called optimum utilization okay effectively and efficiently whenever they come together they are talking about optimum utilization okay again which is a word that you will see in the book so many times sometimes they say optimum sometimes they use these two words but wherever they talk about it they are referring to these two okay the survival and success of an organization the survival and success of an organization depends to a large extent on the competence and character of the management this time they are purely referring to people only because if these people are competent and if they have an attitude towards being successful then the organization can drive well or be driven well say if today anything that reliance does in a great way there are so many people in reliance who help mukesh ambani take decisions but at the end of the day whatever we do as an outside uh, person to that entity you'd say mukesh ambani is great so there might be 100 people assisting him in make decisions give those numbers to him give him inputs but there is a front face for always so that is exactly what they're talking about how competent are people in your organization Huh? what is their character that defines what your organization is plus what did i ask you some time back environment is it stable or dynamic, dynamic. environment is infinitely dynamic not just even dynamic dynamic means what changing infinitely dynamic means what ever changing it's always changing right and one of the fundamental characteristics of environment is that only that it is infinitely dynamic now in an infinitely dynamic environment should we as an organization also respond to the changes or not yes. no i told you silence can also be a response but still should we respond or not yes. last line says management has to facilitate what is called organizational change and an adaptation for effective interaction with the environment which also clarifies that if you remain static you are going to go nowhere so if you want to grow all you need to do is to understand what those changes are in the environment and make a proper move sir what is the right move what is the right time uh, that they are not written ma the books are not available in the market this is how you are supposed to do it this is the right move at the right time so it is for you to figure out and that is exactly why you are there as a chief organ sitting there as a key management one good decision from you can take the organization next level make it a billion dollar enterprise one bad decision can close the organization also so that is exactly why management is very very important in the context of every organization <coughs> are we clear about this first context second one there is nothing i think all of you can start reading it just by yourself it's very very simple this time management definition is not about people not about anything it is just about a set of actions done together come on all of you can take a silent read about what the term management is the second context of what it is Did you read, guys? The first two lines in that only the story is there. What is management? A set of. Again, they didn't say set of functions. Some five words grouped together. No, interrelated. And then basically, it has to follow a kind of an order there. Okay, you can't just throw things and say these are the functions. You can't organize without knowing where to organize, right? So unless you do all these things in action. the management is another term which is a set of interrelated functions and processes carried out by the management of the organization did you read what they said there management is a set of interrelated functions done by whom 
again by management. Now the second line when they are using the word management, what are they referring to? The group of people. So whatever you read in the first paragraph, those people who are called management in the first paragraph, they are only doing these actions. What actions are they doing? Planning. Yeah. Planning, organizing, directing, staffing and control. The functions or sub-processes, the functions or the sub-process of management are wide-ranging, but they are all closely interrelated. No matter how wide their coverage is, they are all interrelated. How are they interrelated? Over the next few days, we will anyway be able to cover up and understand that. They range all the way from determining of the goals. Okay, I think starting tomorrow we will be able to do that. Determining the goals, design of the organization and what was the point that I am talking right from when I started the class? That resources, are they available all in one place? No. Are they scattered across or not? So should we bring the best resources wherever from they are available? Mobilization and acquisition of resources. Does the story end there guys? If you mobilize and acquire them, everything is in my godown. Should I know how to use them also or not? Or three words are important, just remember them. Acquisition, use, disposition. What did I say? Acquisition. Acquisition means what? Acquiring, getting the resources. Use, I think I, I don't need to explain that. Disposition means what? Sending them out also. See, there are two things that are important. Inbound logistics and outbound logistics. Inbound means getting all things in. Which is a very good thing, you are getting them. You then know to use. Then you should have an effective outbound system also. Because even if one thing goes wrong in this whole story, the chain of activities. So until your product goes to the hands of the customer, and you take care of after sale service also. Anyway, like I said, they are all going to come in the long run. But the fact that it is not enough if you just pull in some things and say this is what management is all about. No. Management is not just about acquisition of resources. Acquisition, then allocation of tasks to various people among the various personnel. Installation of a control system to ensure what is planned is being achieved. Managers do things or get things done? Management is not an execution process. It's an influencing process. Management is a influence process to make things happen. But things don't happen on their own. You have to make them happen. That too in an organization, no? Organization is a lifeless entity. The reason why organization looks lively is because of its people. If people in an organization are alive, organization is also alive. Otherwise, organization, X Limited is a building, that's all. Though in your accounting, it's called X Limited as a separate entity, X Limited owner and business are different, everything is fine. But come to practicality. X Limited and the CEO of X Limited. CEO of X Limited has life. And because he is a CEO of X Limited, X Limited also has life. The day everything comes to a standstill, where whoever is the manager of X Limited, he comes out of the organization. What is X Limited? Building. That's all. And he doesn't do anything. X Limited can't take any decisions on its own. Yes or no? Who takes decisions on behalf of X Limited? The management of X Limited. So which is exactly why that line, what you are reading now, is becoming the most important sentence of management. What is that? It's an influence process. So if I am the manager, I influence how my business gets done. Okay? See there. To gain command over what? Over a particular phenomena. And these phenomena are not common. As I just told you in the beginning of today's session, things are changing so drastically. Today, digital transformation is a phenomenon. Today, if any business says, no sir, digital and all, what is a big deal? In six months time, you won't be there in that big deal. Right? Just imagine today, I myself have been to so many shops where sometimes I walk in there, they say QR code, not there. Then I will go out of the shop because I don't have money to pay them. I didn't carry cash. Because I, nowadays most people don't carry cash so much, you know, like, because we believe that everywhere QR is wide, it's become an accepted norm or a practice. The QR must be there, sir. They may not accept cash. But QR, though, definitely they'll accept. Things have become like that. Because over the last three years, that to post pandemic, it's become so common. So if I walk into a shop and I'm trying to see where to scan and it's not there, then I can't continue doing business there. Because though that fellow says, that you know, I can buy it at a cheap price. I don't have cash to pay him. 
So I am only giving him an option. Either you take a QR payment or leave me. I am going to the next shop where QR is. So that means if you don't adapt to the latest technologies, you end up losing business. Now that fellow, what did he do wrong in business? Ideally speaking, in product, he didn't do anything wrong. But the sense of payment today is one of the most accepted payment, the QR code, and he is not accepting that. Because of it, he is losing the whole business. Guys, are you following what we are talking about? Like this, adaptability onto what? When are you managing? Right? Sometimes you do things too early. Right? It's, uh, there are certain scholars first more advantage. Okay? I will explain you that. But I told you sometime back, first more advantage, keep it aside. Sometimes can you become a case study because of becoming the first mover? So like that, it's important for us to decide when to do what. Not always you do jump and do something. Because uh, one more risk is there. Sir, you only told do patiently. Uh, so by the time you patiently understand, slowly do things, somebody would have done that and gone. So there is something in management called first more advantage. There is something in management called second more advantage. So I will explain you what is both these and the stark contrast. But both these, should you be a first mover or a second mover, what to do, when to do, all these decisions are taken by management. Okay, Management is an influence process to make things happen, to gain command over a particular phenomena, to induce and direct events, not only directing events, but you are inducing, means influencing and directing both events and people in a particular manner. Sir, you are going on telling influence, influence means what? Definitely not the definition of influencers on Instagram. Concentrate. Right. Uh, please. Here. Here influence is what? That's why in order for you not to mistake all that, they gave the meaning also. But today the meaning of the word influence is exactly not what influence is. Okay. Uh, so that is why in this context, what is the word influence? They gave off. Right. They are very worried that, you know, you can mistake the word influence to what is happening on Instagram calling influence. Uh, that is not called influence more. This one, which is backed up by underlined words, power, competence, knowledge and resources. Even if you don't have one, which is what I have been shouting all this while. You have lot of power as a business. Right. You have lot of knowledge, no money. Whatever power and knowledge you have can't be implemented. You have all the resources, like all the five M's are very much there. You don't have the knowledge of doing what? So unless there is a deadly combination of all of these, right? That's what management is all about. A skill, doing business is a skill. For some people it comes naturally that, you know, that they learn. Nobody does, you know, by like say there are so many people who studied MBAs and who have started businesses and who have failed drastically. And then there are so many people who never went to school. School, I'm not even talking about college. School, and were very successful in doing business. Because in terms of end of the story, business is about give and take. Now, how effectively can you give and take? All these, they don't read big, big management books. But to the extent of what you see, all those people who have been very successful businessmen without education, if you go and talk to them, They'll always tell, if, do you have any regrets? They won't say regrets, but they will only tell one thing. If I was educated, I'm not talking about anybody else. I'll talk about one of the vibrant leaders of, uh, you know, India. The, somebody asked Dhirubha Ambani, right? What was a big deal about you becoming such a rich person? And is there any regret? Said no regret. And somebody asked the reporter, same reporter asked him, how come you achieved all this without going to a formal education? So what do you suggest? The future of this, future generations of this country, should they focus on their education, study well and do things or should they become like you? He said, I didn't even go to school, that's why I came and stopped here. If I had a formal education, imagine where I could have gone. So, which always means all these people who execute things and he is not the first one to say that. Okay, there are a lot of people who said that, that because many people who have no idea about what education is in terms of formal classroom education, they've all become great. People. In fact, much of those people are very much there in this book. Those people who write all these management theories, no. Uh, they are all not people who graduated from Harvard or Stanford. But those people who are today graduating from Harvard and Stanford are reading their theories. You know, who are those people who wrote those theories? Car mechanic. Because it happens right there, the shop floor level it is called. Right? Every organization has three levels. The third level, the bottom level, it has multiple names. One of the level is called shop floor, shop floor or body shop means where all these parts get assembled. So like that, these are people, car mechanic, 
daily wage worker those are the people who wrote these theories because they are the ones who understand what actually happened not the ceo i'm not saying ceo doesn't understand i'm saying ceo can't directly be involved in all this and that is exactly why those people who grow from here to there no they are effective managers today if mukesh ambani is really very successful he is one of the reasons right his father put him up as a intern or an employee in reliance he worked in their jamnagar factory for 2 years but two brothers came out of the same house and family you know you know now everybody knows what are the status of those two right okay things played bad with the other brother that's a different story but one of the reasons why mukesh ambani is a top level executive is because he doesn't behave like one it's the best thing he still understands the company like a shop floor he knows everybody in the reliance factory by name right that's how a ceo works with their employees the, he knows everybody by name because he spent two or three years only doing like a factory manager like a floor manager he learns he now know exactly knows but there are some other people who directly take the throne to the success which is not wrong again i'm saying this is right that is wrong no but a ceo who doesn't understand how the roots of a company function no matter how great he is end of the day they will still find something lacking those people who know the roots and from there when they get they know the entire path there is a very beautiful analogy of how this is put up but there in the last chapter we will see all that there what do these people do influence is backed up by all these four very important words power competence knowledge and resources managers formulate organizational goals values and strategies to three things cope with adapt and adjust themselves to the behavior and changes of what is the environment because this environment is very dynamic and when an environment is dynamic like that obviously managers have to adapt so that is exactly where this subject comes in strategic management process uh, what is that is a set of i told you, you know the word management now you know the two contexts of management whatever you add before that word management the same thing when you are reading in the other 50 marks you are where you are going to manage money where to get money from after getting money how to use it for working capital where should i get money for capital aspects where should i get money like that you have different chapters which are framed to tell you how to manage money that is financial management what is strategic management a set of activities okay that the firm managers undertake to put their firms in the best possible position to compete successfully in the marketplace strategic management is made up of several distinct activities right which we are going to discuss in detail what are those activities to start with developing a firms vision and mission have you heard of these words now i don't need to know exactly what the meaning of those words are from you but have you heard of these words or not yes. right mission impossible you should not start with a negative thing like that but generally what is a mission mission generally refers to a specific task right that is a mission possible impossible whatever it is mission is a specific task right now what the hell are you doing that's what is called a mission while vision is a different ball game vision is a long range idea vision for a future vision talks about anything ahead of one year maybe three years five if you are see because in today's time viewing anything more than three years is very difficult okay when i was doing my article ship now we used to whenever we are asked to prepare project set a projected financial statement we prepare it for 7 years so i'm talking a long back a decade and a half ago okay like say 15 years ago we used to prepare what is called as a 7 year projection based on today's performance how will my next 7 year be that's called 7 year projection today bankers are happy with even 3 because beyond 3 you don't know what's going to happen technological changes are so damn fast 7 became 5 5 became 3 right 3 also as a matter of fact okay next 3 years where do you be nobody is going to ask you next 10 years where i don't know literally next 3 years where will be how are you asking 10 so but if you can plan of course environment is going to change and we can adapt accordingly but all those people who have become the like say if steve jobs didn't have a great vision today apple wouldn't have been such a big organization and their management practices are such that you know whether steve jobs is alive or not our nation continues to remain number 1 how how do things happen like that we will discuss that also because there are so many fantastic organizations which have died along with their promoter so that means when promoter dies 
Our nation also dies. But we have same examples of Reliance, Apple. Now Larry Page is not there anymore with Google in the active role. Sundar Pichai is running it. Still, company as such is running it. Same thing with Microsoft. Same thing with 20 other places where Indians have become the CEOs who are not the founders of that company. But the company is still running. Why? Because they have vibrant management practices. Management is a system. Right? If Sundar Pichai can run that company today, why didn't he find it in the 80s? Now we will obviously creep and say we didn't have opportunities back then. Fair enough, we were not a capitalism, I mean we were not with full of capitalism back in the 80s. Only in the 90s we opened up our economies, no? Uh, so back then people, whoever are the CEOs of these big companies who moved back to US in the 80s, who are they all? They're all people who had great ideas, who had great things to do, who found jobs there. But since we were not, you know, like back then the only thing that in India we had was to get a job. You get your job. You are happy. That's all. So not like in the 20s or in the you know late 2015s. After 2014-15, or the explosion took place, you know, to where startup culture is very much welcome. Today, people who are very enthusiastic don't go outside India because you go outside India only when you don't find the right place here. This is right now the land of opportunities. So if you are having a little money also, you can start something on your own. That much potential is there. So how things have developed in these years? What are you looking for in the next few years? That roadmap is called a vision. Further in the chapter, both are discussed in full detail. Vision, mission. Of course, what they didn't uh, discuss there in full detail is also another word called objectives. Strategic management has five phases. How many? <laughs> First phase is what? Vision. Developing vision, mission, objectives. In fact, they said developing objectives, right? That also joins the story. I'll tell you in tomorrow's session in detail as to what each of them are. But first step is always what? Forming a vision, mission, objectives. Now once you form vision, mission, objectives, who are you? Who are around you? Should we answer these two questions or not? That entire story comes under strategic analysis, which is why you saw in the index two chapters, strategic analysis, internal strategic analysis, external. If you don't analyze where you are standing, like I said, it is as good as Walking blind into a battle, right? You will get shot and you will don't know who shot from where you got shot and you will never be able to get up also. That's all. So which is exactly why in business, strategic analysis is very important. Sir, should we analyze the environment surrounding us or should we analyze within ourselves? Both. That's why two chapters. Now once you are clear about all this, which is 1, 2 and 3, developing vision, mission, objectives that all come under 1. Strategic analysis is 2. Then comes one of the most important tasks. What is that? Creating, choosing strategies. Creating and choosing is step number 3 actually. Okay. Then 4 is implementing strategy. There are 2 points in that. Right. Creating, choosing. This is what you saw in chapter 4 setting. Strategic choices. There is no reason that you have to choose only one strategy. You have multiple strategies to choose. You can always choose. And then I told you along with implementing what goes hand in hand. Yes. Did you achieve what you want to achieve or not? Evaluating and measuring performance. Actually they didn't complete that sentence. Which anyway in the later definition of strategic management they will conclude. Plus control. Control is step number 5 no doubt. That's all over. This is what our subject is all about. Over the next few days, what we are going to do is take these five steps, split them up into five chapters, take the in and out of each stage and get to know what the story is. Okay? Anyways, like I said, you don't have to worry about how much have we covered, what is it, what is that we discuss only one page. Like I said, doing that entire task is on me. All you need to do is to have concentration, listen, and though there is no much of uh, you know, asking questions, giving answers as a basic expectation. Now, if somebody si chooses to remain silent, it's up to you. But whenever questions are being asked, I'm glad without telling only many of you answered all this. And there will be a lot more of revision. So the same very definition to start off tomorrow will be the first thing that we'll ask. And I'll ask you what is management, the two context. So don't, uh, you know, think that why are we being asked? It's a professional course, so I have to be serious. Uh, please leave all that outside the class. When you come to a class, behave like a student of the class simply. When we are all revising, revise together, right? When questions are being asked, try to answer. 
this is the only place where you can confidently give wrong answers there is another place called exam hall where if you confidently write wrong answers some people write wrong answers in neat handwriting <laughs> but still you will get zero only understood so there is one place where you are not supposed to go wrong this is a place where you can go wrong how many times you want right what will other person think what will i think Ma, i don't have so much time and patience think about you so don't worry okay so if i give wrong answer everybody will laugh very good freely others can laugh at something that we told so be happy about that and just tell because if you go wrong it's a very good thing next minute you will learn and this is the only place where that is possible there also it is possible but you have to wait 6 months <laughs> understood so let's not trouble it up okay there's a lot of revision that will happen be participative enough to be revising so that you know like i said this very class whatever you revise here shout out as the answers a very much reverberate back in the exam center and this is not the first time this is happening this has been happening over years so don't worry you can trust me on the process for now all i want you is to for now again like i said you can just follow on what i'm saying but when you are into it you will find the essence of what i'm telling it to be working well all right so i'll see you tomorrow with the definition of strategy to start off with and then we'll go strategic management and break those five points in detail all right guys thank you i'll see you in tomorrow's session